Welcome to our channel, Why Not Now? My name is Steven, and this is my beautiful wife, Lisa Marie. What are we talking about today, baby? Today, we are giving you the reasons why we chose to live in beautiful Aguas Calientes, Mexico. Beautiful Aguas Calientes, Mexico. So, if you've been following us all along our journey, you know that we have our temporary residency here in Mexico. <clears throat> We've been living here for about close to a year and a half. We actually lived in the beautiful Querétaro, Santiago de Querétaro, Mexico for a little over a year and decided to further our travels to continue bringing our work ethic and the values that we have for sharing the truth and giving our honest and transparent opinions about wherever we may live. And we moved on to Oaxaca City, which you know if you followed us didn't work for us. Be sure to check out those videos. We showed you apartment tours. We explained how the lease uh, experience went for us and we had a video on did we bail out. We also went to Mazatlan, which we considered living in, but we realized it wasn't for us either. And be sure to check out those videos. We have a little series showing you around Centro and uh, many other places actually giving you some tips and advice about the rental culture there. Mm -hmm. And now we are in Aguas Calientes, which we will be living in at least for a minimum of a year, yeah. as long as we lived in Querétaro. And we have seven points, seven reasons why we chose Aguas Calientes. So I will begin with number one. Okay. If you see me looking down from time to time, I'm looking at my notepad here. In no particular order, climate. So Aguas Calientes is a semi-arid climate. When we were traveling and we stayed in Mazalan for about a month, we realized that although we loved Mazalan, the beach was gorgeous, it was incredible. We didn't like the to the, it being so touristy, but again, check out the video for the full reasons why Mazalan didn't work for us. But we realized we couldn't deal with the humidity. And even though Mazalan technically isn't known for being super humid in comparison to other places, like for example, Merida in Mexico, it is very hot and it does get humid. And when we were there, we were there during the winter time and we realized Gosh, it was already feeling like 90 at 7 a.m. Yeah. and it just wasn't for us. Yeah, we had the AC going that early in the morning. Yeah, we did. And we didn't we don't mind that hot, but what we realized is we preferred the drier heat versus a humid hot, and we prefer to deal with it only for a few months rather than year-round. Correct. So climate semi-arid in Aguas Calientes, you have you do get very hot summers, but they are short-lived. So a couple of months of very hot summertime weather. Um, you get a couple of months of very cool winter-like weather. Then the remainder of the year generally it ranges from, I would say, uh, maybe 30, 32 degrees more or less to 86 more or less. It never falls below like the 32 degrees. Well, it, it can happen, but rarely. And it rarely goes above 92 degrees Fahrenheit. But keep in mind, it still can get pretty hot. Like in fact, right now, uh, we're going into March any any day now, and it, you know it's 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 starting to warm up. It feels right now like it's about what mid 80s. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice hot day, but it's beautiful. It's it's a drier heat. Yep. So, uh, does Aguas Calientes have a rainy season? Yes, it does, just like Querétaro does, and its rain, rainy season runs from uh, June to, to October more or less. So they do get their rainy season, and. Um, we don't know yet about you know flooding and things like that we are going no. to learn as we go um, we're just giving you some points as to why we chose aguas calientes but we, as we continue to learn you know as we learn we share with you all as we must make mistakes here and learn from them we share them with you all you know how we do here yeah okay so my husband's gonna take number two which is the location location um of course you guys already know that we seems like we're a fan of central Mexico. So Aguas Calientes is located in north central Mexico. It borders the states of Zacatecas and also the state of Jalisco. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna, that's where we plan to go future travels. We plan to go check out Zacatecas because we were told to go there, check it out. It's beautiful there. And of course, we're gonna go check out Jalisco, may go to Guadalajara things like that yeah and there's also some other nearby cities that my husband was mentioning and i think it's a great idea that we should go check those out san luis potosi oh, yeah, san luis potosi mm -hmm. and then one of our other favorite spots like hopefully you hear us from the street noise guys one of the other favorite spots that we like Guanajuato, Guanajuato city we already went there we had gone there previously but we it was a 
quick overnight couple of hours type of a deal but we were a fan of the uh, Guanajuato city so we plan on going back over there checking Guanajuato city out right yeah we went to Leon a couple of times as well so we can also pin those videos below for you we've actually done quite a bit of Mexico travel through Puebla, Cholula, Tequis, Almialco, many many other mm -hmm. uh you know travels we actually have a playlist called our Mexico travel vlog so you can check that out to see where we've traveled to okay number three is population so you know, I remember when we first moved to Santiago de Querétaro a year and a half ago, we, we also did a video just like this, why we chose Querétaro during that time, what our what our reasons were. And um, we population was one of them too for Querétaro. So Aguascalientes has a population uh, similar to Querétaro. It's about a million and a half, give or take. There's varying uh, types of information online, but it seems as of 2019, I think it was maybe like 1.4 million people. Um, and we like a city that doesn't feel too big, but doesn't feel too small. And for us, that, that just feels just right. Um, so it also is one of the smallest states in Mexico. So just keep that in mind as well. Yep. I'll let my husband take number four. Number four, of course, is always a thing that's big on our list, safety. We feel safe here. We haven't really uh, encountered anything or seen anything or even heard about anything over here. Um, you can walk around over here at night. Everything, everybody's just out and about having a good time and they're minding their business. That's one thing that we, we've noticed over here. So yeah, as far as safety goes, you know, um, Aguas Calientes is known as a safe city. And that's one of the other reasons why we selected this city. Yeah, and as we always tell you, my husband will always tell you what his favorite oh, yeah. line is. Keep the head on a swivel. Keep your head on a swivel. That, does, that, that just means that, does crime exist here? Sure it does. It exists everywhere in the world because people live everywhere in the world. Yeah. But, you know, everyone's idea of what is safe and what isn't safe will be different. So you're going to have to have your own experience and you're going to have to visit and see for yourself. We feel completely fine here. Yeah. We're enjoying it here. Do things happen? Sure, they happen everywhere in the world. But we feel it's a fairly safe city for us. Yeah, just like my wife coming from New York City. I'm coming from Atlanta, Georgia. We There's some rough areas over there. So when we moved to Boise, Idaho, we were like, oh, it's super quiet, super safe. But you always have to keep your head on the swivel because as in Boise, Idaho, crime was happening and we moved to Lexington, Kentucky, the same thing. You know, it's a smaller city. We're like, oh, it's not as bad as the cities we come from. And but Indianapolis as well. Things still happen. Yeah, Indianapolis, that's a different story. Yeah, <laughs> it's a different story. That we live there story for a short in the Midwest. Time. Yeah, different yeah. story. Okay, number five. We, uh, this is a major one for us to be honest with you. We, we picked it because it has a very low ex expat penetration. Yeah. Um, there are not a lot, of, a lot of expats here. You may say, well, you're expats. Yes, we are. Um, for those of you who've been following our videos, you know our mindset, you know the things that are important to us, you know um, how we choose to live our life and we try to be very simple. We try to educate ourselves on the local places that we live in so that we, we try our best not to overpay. Yes, are you gonna pay a little bit, a little foreigner tax as you um, live in other any other country? Sure you are because that's just kind of the name of the game, but you can minimize the impact. You can be smart about how you rent and educate yourself and talk to the locals about the local pricing. Um, and we kind of appreciate the fact that it has a low expat penetration because we noticed that you know unfortunately when things get on the map and it's not all expats honestly it's no. just maybe a small percentage that come with a certain mentality and you know they bring they don't think they don't think to educate themselves on the local pricing and they, they're willing to pay whatever and then what all that does is really push the local people out where they can't live in the nice areas because the prices start going up and then other foreigners that are coming here to live a simple life and for the affordability and to learn about the culture you know they're seeing the prices being hiked up so we just try to take out take accountability and be responsible and you know learn where we're living and learn what the pricing is so for us um, we we like the fact that it was not a re retire known as a retiree yeah. on the radar type of a city. Um, it wasn't known for it to be a vacation spot. I'm sure a lot of people come here to travel. Yes, there is tourism everywhere um, in different cities. There's different levels of tourism, and a lot of people do come here to enjoy like the hot springs and the beauty of Aguas Calientes. But we like we like but, being in the culture. We like being in a very Mexican city. Yeah, because it's not it's not to that level of a San Miguel de Allende. Oh no, no or, way, no or, no like, way. Even no. how Mazatlan was. No uh, way. Yeah, someone hit it around the head. They're not a fan of Tercy City, uh, and that's right. Honestly, not a fan of it's city. not even the level of Querétaro. Let's be honest. No, no, it's not. Querétaro is different. Um, the expat penetration there is a lot more than it is here. It's yeah. very different. Being that Querétaro is now number one on some list, somebody said yeah. some list of 2022. Once it, because, once it hits those, I hate to say it, it gets rammed up, it hits yeah. those lists and, and you know, people start 
saying the number one city to live you know and yes we like to share with you there if there are nice places to live but we don't you know we always tell you the the, the good the bad the in-between we don't just go this is the best city to live in for expats amazing and then all of a sudden everybody just goes oh my god it was we heard it was amazing and they all flooded we, we try to tell you the truth about everything yeah our channel as you guys already know our channel is all about blending in with the with the, with the locals not changing the environment. not trying to change the environment so when it comes to a point when it's so touristy and everybody start coming in unfortunately it's time for us to do like this right here goodbye <laughs> you know and, and i'm not trying to be offensive to anybody it's just more of like we. but prefer, it's our truth and we have to speak the truth yeah, to you all you, yeah, we you. prefer to be in a more of a local spanish like mexican city you know and and for those in the past i think we were talking about this and someone had said a, some ignorant comment they said we should go live in a village we don't want to live in a village that's not <laughs> what we're saying okay so for those of you who who are so quick to get your fingers ready just stop right there and before you just say anything by watching one video this one video check out our other videos see what we're about before you go ahead and put your foot in your mouth because that's what ends up happening and then you realize that you assume and you categorize us with other youtubers and we're just completely different okay yeah so and also <laughs> that person she's talking about they end up reaching back out our tools asking us for some help after they insulted us but on to the next okay so number six my husband will take it it was within our budget within our budget um as you guys know we were talking about um how mazalon was kind of overpriced it was highly priced um we gave we, you examples yeah we gave examples our budget is our budget our budget may not be may be different from everybody else's budget so that's why we're telling you the reason why we select the aquas calientes um and, and we just like what we're seeing the price of everything like we can go down the street be honestly honest Honestly, with you, we can go down the street, get some gorditas, go get some quesadillas, go get some stuff for a fairly reasonable price. Yeah, like, 20, 20 pesos for a nice gordita. Yeah. Delicious gordita. And you don't have to go to these fancy restaurants to, to enjoy a nice meal. You can go get some quick street eats. Nothing man. wrong with that. I mean, yeah, we may do that on occasion. You know, we haven't done it in a long yeah, time. We just had an anniversary, but we didn't yeah. do it. But if that's your thing, that's fine. But this is a city where, you know, it's just, you just walk to the streetcars. You can go, get you, a, go to a little small restaurant, very local. We love that about it. We don't have to go to these, you know, uppity places. Are there nice places? Sure. But it, definitely another, another thing I want to add about this city is that I mentioned this in our first Aguas Calientes video because we did come here once before last year to visit. Make sure you check out that video. I'll pin that as well below. It definitely feels like a younger city. It is. Um, it, it has it has a mixture of colonial, but it kind of it kind of crashes into modern one end could be a little bit more modern than the other end is colonial so in that aspect it feels very different from Queretaro. Queretaro has modern amenities a lot like Hurinquilla we've done a ton of neighborhood tours there mm -hmm. we have a whole neighborhood tours playlist for you we've done so many different things in Queretaro we know the city in and out we've done we've done all the groundwork when we were there for that year mm -hmm. check out our videos Trust king me. and queens of Queretaro right? yeah king and queens so um, but if, but in comparison, it has a very different feel. There's similarities, certain things you may see, like the colonial churches, but it's still it's very, it's different. very different. Very, very, very different. different. Yeah. Okay, so number seven, which will be the well, the last technically, right? Um, minimal pollution. So I've, as you all know from our Oaxaca City video, you know, when we were living, I'm not saying all of Oaxaca, I'm not saying all of Oaxaca City either. We lived only in Oaxaca City, in, in the barrio of Aurora, like I mentioned in our other Oaxaca videos and we were up high in the hills, smoke rises, and you know, we couldn't breathe up there. And it's not known for having like AC and things like that. So it was a little bit difficult to breathe over there. That was just one, excuse me, one of the many factors that affected us not being able, we have health conditions, we have respiratory issues. So here, the air quality, I'm not saying it's perfection, nowhere is it gonna be perfection, but um, it's, it's pretty decent it's it's good do you have days that where the air quality index is moderate sure do you have when it's bad it's poor and it's red sure but it's not um a everyday thing where the air quality no. is poor so for those of you who know how air quality index aqi works if it's anything below 50 that is considered good air quality okay anything below 100 is considered satisfactory air quality and of course you know we never want to even have anything to do with a city that has over 300 is like considered hazardous like yeah. you cannot breathe at their period but for us you know for the most part the air the air quality is pretty good there are times when we have we've only been here now a few weeks we've got we have smelled like well by the time you all see probably about a month yeah. but um we have well, smelled like burning like some burning in the air but it's only been you know once in a blue moon it's not an everyday thing yeah like uh, we have seen i don't know if there's something that the city does um 
they have burned a field with grass or whatever. Right. They, they just burned it. Um, that only lasts like two days. But other than that, it's done. It's not like how it was in Oaxaca where you wake up every morning or how we were waking up every morning in Oaxaca City. And you can see it across the smog and stuff in the, in the skyline. Yeah. Uh, it's not like that at all over here. No, and uh, I was gonna say that for those of you um, who are looking, we're, and now we have our seven points. Now, for those of you who are looking for the, I have, I have, have had people ask me about the our uh, residency renewal video. I've done it. I've prepared it for you all. My husband's ed yeah. editing it actually right now. It's about to come out. You know, with any any week now, actually, um, it's ready for you. For those of you who are looking how to obtain your residency in Mexico, I did a two part video on that, step by step, showing you documentation, how to fill out forms, the websites, everything. It is one of the most thorough video series you are going to get on temporary residency in Mexico. I promise you that. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. Um, I'll go ahead and link that below as well. But the renewal, how to renew, and our and the experience that we had, I'm going to share that very soon. It's prepared. It's just being edited right now. So before we end the video, I would say a bonus point. Okay, what's the bonus point you would like to talk about? <laughs> What's funny is that we were talking about it on the way here, but I, I guess he didn't expect me to say it. We just love the vibe of the city. Oh yeah, yeah. We 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 really truly enjoy the vibe of the city. You um, kind of got into it a little bit about the food. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's 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 very cool. You see people riding beach cruisers. Mm -hmm. You see skateboarders, um, and, and everybody. It's just it's just a different feel. Yeah. It's like my wife was saying earlier, it's like a younger city. It's not a, a retiree type city. It's just but it, a totally but it's, different. Uh, but feel. it's great for everyone though. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to me, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, just seeing certain things, it reminds me of like an LA, not an LA beach feel, an LA street feel. Mm -hmm. Well, like, that's I'm, what I'm does talking that mean? about, I'm talking about you're gonna see people riding around on beach cruisers with the LA hats plaid and, and the plaid shirts, like the, the uh, I guess you say LA gangsters, man. <laughs> that's what you're gonna see over here. Uh, you're gonna see with all the tattoos and all that stuff yeah. going on. Uh, it's very common that you walk by somebody that has all face tattoos, yeah. and I'm fine with it. You're good people are good people. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. But we're telling you this for those of you, maybe uh, we've been exposed to different environments. We grew up in different yeah, areas from bad areas to middle to we've seen it all. Okay. Um, if I could just touch people and let them really see our upbringing, you'd be completely shocked. I'm, I'm not even gonna. You know, I don't want to get into detail. It's a personal story, but I've, I've, when I was younger, I lived, I was homeless. I lived on the streets. A lot of you don't know that. I have not shared that with you before. Um, there are a lot of stories we can tell you about things. We have, we have, we, we are very well-rounded people. Um, we've been very humble. We're very, you know, grateful for the experiences that have made us into who we have, and a lot of pain comes with that. But you know, people judge people, and and it's 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 easy to do that. But what I'm saying is, for those of you maybe who didn't grow up in an environment where you saw different types of people, people, yeah. people from all walks of life. When you come here, you're gonna see that, and and there are good people everywhere. Aguascalientes is a beautiful city. Yeah. It's an amazing city. We can't wait to dig into it. We we can't wait to visit the hot springs to dig into check out you know the wine vineyards. There's a lot we want to see here, and we're gonna share with you. Um, we're also gonna bring you more informative content. We have a lot of informative information to share with you. We've been living here for quite some time now here in Mexico. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Anything, any 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 final thoughts, husband? No, I don't have any final thoughts. You have any final thoughts? I think we're good to go. So. Let's end it all as we always do. <laughs> Sorry, live, guys. It's just <laughs> a lot of background noise. Then. Live the life that you were meant to live. Keep a grateful heart. And remember, why not now? All right, guys. Peace.